Uh, hello, Gary. Hello, how are you? All good. How was the... How is everything? Hey, Karim. It's going all right. Stopped raining for a little bit today. Oh, really? You got <laughs> rain, <coughs> rain and snow or? Oh yeah, yesterday rained. Actually the last several days has been rain, rain, rain. Hello. What in Karim? Hello. I think Matt is uh, pretty all right. Yes. Hey, Justin. Hello. How are you? Good? Good. Nobody has video off avatars for, for some reason. What? <laughs> Yeah, all I see is names. Maybe it's maybe I need to log in. Maybe that's the problem. That was the same for me. I'm not logged in. This is the Hyperledger account, right? Or is this a consensus account? This is Hyperledger Zoom account, I believe. Hmm. I was also in the other chat that Dana was not uh, able to make it or. <clears throat> oh no, actually he wrote that he might be. Do we want to keep it up or do we want to wait? Or then I'll come on to join. I think since he was only a tentative, we should probably just go ahead and get started. Uh, good. Let me share my screen. Cool. So, welcome everybody to this uh, uh, base contributor call. Uh, today is the 14th. Uh, quick housekeeping. Uh, Andrew was noticed. Uh, this will be recorded. Please mute when I'm speaking. If you have any question, raise your hand. Uh, I think uh, this uh, Matt is uh, on PTO, but is there any update on uh, uh, API? I'm looking for the update. Um, we were talking about the Circle CI billing. Uh, yes. Yeah, give me it's just a second. Start. I'm looking for the specific message about this, but I, I heard that we have addressed the looming uh, end of contract. Okay, let's see. Uh, has is handled until the end of April. Uh, Josh Fernandez just confirmed that. So even though the, the current contract says it's up until it's up in, on March 17th on Friday, uh, it should be handled and paid for through April. So we should be good there. Nice. I think well, there was probably more that Matt wanted to talk about regarding uh, transitioning uh, the Circle CI payment post withdrawals, but maybe we'll have to wait for a second, a next call to discuss that since he's out. Sounds good. Just writing some notes. Uh, cool. Next topic, the CO issue. I am. I don't think so. Yeah, go ahead. Sally's been working on uh, on DCO issues. I don't know exactly what the DCO issues she was trying to address were uh, regarding 
if it's the merge into main, like on a subsequent on a subsequent squash merge into main, we were getting uh, DCO failures there, and she's been addressing that uh, in the same context as she's been working on the GitHub merge queue. Um, so I think that uh, there's a good updoor update on Discord about what's going on with merge queue, and there's some conversation about that. I think is that on the agenda. Circle CI billing contributor. No, uh, it looks like it's only kind of tangential. Yeah, I think they're related. I think the DCO issues are being resolved in the context of the GitHub merge queue currently. Sounds good. So those are related GitHub uh, merge queue. Nice. Anything else to add on the GitHub merge queue then? Or any update on that? I think Dano had actually expressed an interest in disabling the merge queue, but since he's not here, I don't know. It is. Oh, he, he just anybody have any? yeah. Oh, there he is. Cool. I'm here. Welcome. So I don't think the merge queue is ready to go. It's missing an important feature. Um, we can't edit our merge commits. We either have to use just the topic line of the PR, or we have to use the entire merge history of everything we have ever done in the process of getting it reviewed. So we either have very, very verbose spew of spotless, spotless review changes, bunch of useless data going in there, or we have no data going in. And my concern is that third. we are, what's the third? Oh, sorry. I think the third option is that you can take the PR description body as well. I don't know that that's a great option either, but it is another option. That's an option? Uh, that wasn't expressed online. Even if yeah, we could go to that, it would be better. Because you could go through, finish editing it, edit the description of the of the scene, and get it committed in there. I just think if we're going the option of total spew or a single line, it's a great disservice to anyone who's going to maintain this or view this in the future, whether or not they're a maintainer. Because sometimes all they may get is the commit log. They may not have the whole GitHub history behind it. And we need to think not just about the role of us you know, going through the build process. We need to think of people using this code later on in the future. Um, I know when I go and I spelunk issues and I look at other code bases all the time, I go back to the commit log and see what they say in the commits. And I use the, the blame tree to see where things get changed to get a feel of what's being changed. And we just lose all that context to go in and fix bugs for future maintainers who didn't write the code that's going in. I agree. I think that one of the other options that was presented was a, a, a local squash merge and force push. And that, that is an even greater disservice, I think, because you actually wipe out that history. I, I agree mm -hmm. that we want to do that. I, th I think it, it might, it sounds like we might have a potential compromise path of using the PR description. Right. Would it be the whole description or would it be like some subset of the description or would we need a... I think it's full description. Let me find the docs. I'll, I'll paste a, a link to chat just a sec. So but we'll need to find another way to do our little checklist things then if we do that, you know, I've I've added the commit log. I've done this, that, and the other. We could probably put that in as um, I don't know if we could have a bot that could always put a comment and said, "Hey, have you done this?" Um, that's you know one way we might be able to preserve those things because we're kind of using the description as as a temporary scratch workspace. But I, I, you know, I'd rather get rid of that temporary scratch workspace, or I'd rather wait until GitHub has this at a higher level of quality. And does this work in a merge queues? I believe so, like... actually. Yeah, I think it's it's part of merge queues. If I could share a screen for just a second, I could probably show the, the GitHub option for it. So we can, uh, on allow squash merging, uh, the, we can default to the pull request title, commit details, request title and description, or just the pull request title. So I think that let's, the, let's the option the that we're discussing on. is this one. This one? Let's try the description. OK. Because I've got one I haven't merged yet. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Uh, let me okay. see what the pending PR is. Let me edit the description. Zoom keeps focusing on me. 
You want me to update the comment? Let's try merge and ready. Let's see what the PR looks like. What's your I mean, you've got a second flow through screen, which is a confirm you want to merge when ready. I mean, that's the perfect place to put the commit log. It's it feels like an unfinished feature on the part of Basu, a uh, Basu GitHub. GitHub, yeah. What was your PR number, so by the way? Um, five two zero two. Yeah, that actually is better. You, we just changed what our our, our uh, we're ready to commit because I mean we could review those check marks and then edit the description and commit from there. That that's the middle ground I'm looking for. Cool. The workflow could be better, but now it's at least possible. I'm not seeing the commit message on that PR just yet, maybe because it's in queue, but. Uh... It's in queue. You, if you go to the branches, um, it's going to have these big, ugly branch numbers in there. GH read only queue main PR 5202, big, ugly hex. Um, and then you, yeah, you have to click a few places to go through it. Oh, if I look, if I look at merge queue, I see the title says verify default logging is info 5202 open and enqueued. Is that what the message will be? No, let me. No. Okay. Um, much. So am I sharing the right window? Um. So let's see, if we go to Basu, we go to branches, we see this big ugly branch. We go to commits, we look at the top commit. So this is what will go in. Oh wait, are you sure? This, this, is, this is better than what we had before. Yeah, was yeah that, is, that is reasonable. No, it is now, we see it now. Okay, okay let me go back to show you how I got there. So we go to branches, we go to read queue, mm. and then actually, um, yeah, it's right here actually. So it's the big ugly branch that's in the process of being merged, where you can view what it's going to look like when it actually merges. So it sounds like we need to update our our PR guidelines to call out that we want to have a description that's mergeable basically by the, when, when we use merge queue. Right. Okay. So that, that solves my, my big issue there. UX could be better, but it's possible. Whereas before it was just not possible. Solving problems on the call. All right. It's Did Matt drop off? Did we lose him? Oh, Matt's, was he's on screen? PTO. Yeah. Um, oh, Matt is in PTO. Francisco. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let me just share again. Well, who the next uh, item? We can release update. Yeah, can I there? have just a small update oh, yeah. uh, before Oops. moving to the next topic? So we, with Gary, we are working on a bonsai refactoring um, in order to improve the stability and uh, reduce the memory impact of bonsai, <laughs> sorry. And uh, we have a PR for that. So if some people want to test, uh, I can share the PR. So we, we are trying to test this PR uh, and to find uh, as, as much as possible the issues before the merge. So it seems to be very stable and uh, it seems that it's managed uh, the memory very well. So. But if some people want to test the PR, feel free to test it. We are trying to to find all of the issue we have now with Banzai, and uh, yeah. That's so one. far, the the only issues that we had found, um, which was one of the reasons we delayed uh, uh, adding it as a burn-in candidate last cycle, last release cycle, was that uh, some of the traces, the tracing endpoints, would attempt to access closed world states. Uh, in order to uh, format the result. And there's a, we have another 
couple PRs that are addressing that. Yeah. So if the if if you discover anything apart from tracing with five one two three, we would greatly appreciate knowing about it in advance because we're we're looking for all kinds of ways to try to break it. So far, only the tracing endpoints have have yielded any fruitful uh, breakage. So we we did some. Uh... We Amazon is helping us to verify the memory, CPU, a lot of things like that. We are also trying to stress test the, the PR. We tried with some validator with some normal node. So yeah. So if you have more ideas to test this PR, feel free to to do to do that. Oh. Nice. Cool. Just added the PR also link in the, the doc. Uh, anything else on the general announcements? Okay, yep. cool. We move uh, on the release update. Any updates on the side? On um, the release update, uh, 23.1.1 went out with uh, support for the Gourley Chapella uh, hard fork and uh, an update, a, a fix for the RC1 Sepolia um, Chappella release. Um, 23.1.2 is where we're anticipating, tentatively, we're anticipating uh, mainnet Chappella configs. Uh, and also, well, presumably we'll be merging in the bonsai refactor as well. That's, uh, those are the, the, the two primary things that uh, are, of interest, at least uh, <laughs> to to Chupacabra team, at least uh, what, we're, what we're focusing a, a lot on is uh, the bonsai refactor and the Chappelle release for twenty three one two. Does anybody else have highlights for the twenty three dot one dot two that we're uh, targeting? Like Just to add, there are some backward sync fixes, mainly one that was triggering an internal error. So what what happens with that it got fixed or? Yes, it is fixed. The PR is open. Uh, the idea is to release with the next dot point version. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Fabio. Cool. Um, should we go on work update? You mentioned a bit on Shanghai planning update, or this is something that is relevant now, Gary? Yeah, I don't know any of any Shanghai planning that's uh, happening outside of setting the the mainnet release date. I think we are hours away from uh, Chappella activating on Gurley. I'm not I'm not certain about that. I wasn't I wasn't tracking it too closely. Yeah, uh, we're about six hours away. Yeah. So assuming all goes well there, I think the only subsequent Chappella planning Shang, Shanghai or Chappella planning would be uh, choosing the mainnet fork timestamp. Sounds good. Six hours. Well, wow. so what's the readiness? Forty-eight, forty-four. Um, I know that's the next one coming up. Um, what's the? Uh, yeah, uh, was the people working on it? Is it really going to ship Q three? Is it going to be more of a Q four? Just wondering for planning. So the the 4844 we have joined the latest DevNet and we are following the network. Now the big uh, question is about the SSC. How much of the SSC is going to be uh, added to Cancun? Uh, this could make the difference for us, depending 
so it could be added effort because on the 4844 we should be uh, fine at the moment but these uh, so the open question is the SSC. So one of the interesting things coming out of the EOF land is there's discussion to, to solve the create issue, creating a new create three that would require a separate new top level create transaction. Um, and there's, they're wondering in the talk whether, you know, how, whether we should do the two-step um, EOF for the, for the very large EOF or whether we should do a one-step and try and get everything in. And if we're messing with transactions, I, I almost want to say that opens a window of opportunity for us to get it all in. Um, but I mean, the, basically the, the format would be, there would be no init code. You put your code out there once, and then you would, um, you know, just independent of any execution. And then when you create stuff, you would say, I want you to clone this with this extra data. And it would reformat and add the extra data on the end of it. And you would call the init code as part of that process. So you would need to go to full factories rather than having this init code state that is kind of weird where you can pass an arbitrary EVM. So hearing that, you know, that the SSZ could be one of the issues, I think one of the things to consider is that we might want to use this as an option to get more transaction types in, but we might not. So that's setting the table for what's what's coming down the pike from the EOF team, I think might be a, worth keeping our heads around. Do you think that, um... Delivering EOF with create three and SSZ pushes us more towards Q4. Yes, SSZ definitely pushes us to Q4. I think SSZ alone pushes us to Q4. Um, and pushing to Q4 makes the big EOF, the one shot EOF possible because we need a few more weeks of design time to make sure we cover it and do things like talk to us, Lydia and Viper and the ZK teams, make sure we're not screwing anything up for them. So I tried to get a hold of some of the ZK people at um ETH Denver, but Trying to get a specific person in a booth is like impossible. And trying to talk to people after a talk is also impossible because everyone gets mobbed. Um, I did get a hold of the, um, is it ZK Scroll? That was the, com the community one. So there's there's ZK Scroll, there's ZK Sync, there's um, Consensuses, there's Polygons, and I feel like I'm missing one. Aztec? Aztec. Is that Scroll? Uh, was that Polygon? No, it's not Scroll. Mess. The scroll people are concerned about what's going on in EOF because they built their their approach is to build a full on EVM interpreter. So you know the the new bytecodes aren't going to be a problem. The new formatting isn't going to be too much of a problem for them. Um, I think it's more interesting to the people who are like down to the type three and type four, like zk Seek era, um, where create three actually works towards their model. Ironically enough. Um, but we just want to make sure we're not doing things in our static jumps or any of the other things that we're putting together. The theory is it's going to make ZK um, compilation of EOF EVMs easier, but I want to get confirmation of that before I start spreading that on all core devs. Okay. You, Dano, are you looking for a contact for the consensus CK EVM? Um, yeah, I could just link it to me in te Telegram or uh, chat, uh, okay. Discord. One cool. of the many, many chat apps. Hmm. Yeah. Just not WhatsApp. It's... I don't use WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Got it. Oh, cool. maybe with like uh, Declan or Marco or something. But you know more, Gary. Okay, cool. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I'm at the PTO. Um, Robert, you put on a new planning phase. I don't know if anybody has to say on, on this, but I think it's on, uh, it's on deck, right? Did he leave the Zoom deck? Sorry, you can see it, Justin? I was just saying maybe we should postpone that to the next meeting when Matt's back is all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's do that. Um, this one was just, it was raised by Diego on uh, Discord that uh, the, the Postman-based uh, 
Basu API hosting is down. It's giving a 404. Um, mm -hmm. I don't actually know. I don't think anybody, I think Nico knew the most about it. And he said that this was something that Hyperledger was uh, paying for providing publishing. Uh, and that was the extent of his uh, knowledge of that pipeline for getting that out there or having it paid for. So does anybody have was, any detail on that? It was also more expensive than CI, believe it or not. Oh my God, just for a postman thing? Yeah. Cool. Okay, crazy. I was on mute, but I said, holy cow. <laughs> so that, yeah, I don't know that we get the value out of that that we thought we would. I mean, it's great we were top 20, but um, I don't think it's, you One know, thing to contributions consider is welcome. The, <laughs> uh, Web3 Signer and Teku both uh, consensus is publishing in a similar way. Maybe we could um, piggyback on that process uh, and on that uh, that that billing. I guess <laughs> I presume that there that consensus has a, a better negotiated rate than more expensive than CI. I would hope. Is that something that we would want to pursue? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Does anyone have any alternatives to Postman that they like that they would like to have explored? Yeah, me neither. All right. <laughs> no alternatives. Cool. What's, um, I, I've got a question yeah, about what's the, what's the value of this? I mean, we were, I heard, Dano, you said it was top 20. On so it's a really slick UI interface to do your JSON RPC calls. Um, it's it's kind of like what Swagger gets you for some of the rest stuff, but mm -hmm. optimized for JSON RPC. Uh, because JSON RPC has got to be its own thing. So, but are we, do you think we were we're getting the value from that? I mean, were, were we top twenty because there was a lot of traffic through there, or uh, I'm just wondering what the what the cost? You know, there was a lot of people using it, and I don't think they were using Basu. I think they were using it because it was uh, just a general Web three interface that they could poke stuff at. Uh, okay. So if if it was Basu focused. Um, I would have more heartache over it going away, but I think there was a large free rider issue. Okay. If we don't renew it, we should probably remove it from the docs references. And if we do renew it, yep. we probably will need to update the URL. Either way, it seems like it's yep. going to be a docs issue. Mm -hmm. Maybe moving the URL will solve the free writer problem anyway. So what are we doing? Are we remo removing it or just changing the URL? Can we put just a, a, an action item in the notes for this that we're going to circle back with uh, exploring the option of consensus um, Piggybacking on consensus is a postman deployment process and following up with docs. Hey. And if consensus is paying for it, feel free to say this link provided by consensus is a service to community. I mean, don't be if it's if it's in consensus's name, don't be ashamed to to toot your horn on it. Cool. A Karim wrote, are we talking about this? I think he's mentioning the. Yeah, just this link is working. Uh, I think uh, it was done by Nicola. So. And uh, on the left, you have all of the method. And, uh, Okay. So maybe oh. we can just replace by this one, no? The link, the link. Possibly. I I don't actually know what api.basu.hyperledger.org looked like. It it might have been might have been largely similar. 
I thought that it was going to be more like a typical swagger where there was you know, a self-documented JSON RPC. I think it's different from this because this, I think you, if you pay for Postman, you get access to all of these. So they're still getting the revenue. I think it was mm -hmm. a public front end that no one was paying for. I mean, that, that yeah, that, that the people we were paying for it to put the front end up and the customers could come in anonymously. Right. Okay. Okay. So we mentioned already the SQL uh, dealing cycle. Yep. I think that's sorted. That's sorted. Then we get to the, the call timing. Uh, uh, then are you mentioning like to moving all to the meeting one or two hours? That yeah, if the... we could. So, so the day of week, I thought it would work better, but I looked at it and the only open day is Thursday. And that's like the worst day to do this meeting at the same time. Cause that's like during or after all core devs. And I don't know if that's going to be productive. Um, if we could, so if there's a couple of options that I'd be toying with Matt. One of them was to move it out an hour. So rather than meeting at nine local, my local time would be 10. It'd be a little bit harder on the Europeans, or we could move it two hours earlier, which would be harder on the West Coast people. Um, the problem is I have a lot of European people we have to work with. And again, there's a lot of European people on this call. And this is like the golden hour for like reasonable time calls on both sides of on the West Coast and then Eastern Europe. So it, it's kind of a difficult time to do. Another option was to go to weekly calls, but rotate them eight hours. Um, Cause the Australia call really only Australians call in. I used to call in when I didn't have high school conflicts where I was you know, taxing my kids around and helping out with their activities, but that's not something that I can do, you know, for the rest of the school year. Um, and it'd be nice to get, you know, the Americans and the Australians on a call the Australians and the Europeans on a call to, to kind of, you know, grow some more, um threads between the various groups um and so if, if we had an eight hour shift then you know it'd be either at the beginning of your work day or at the end of your work day or a call that you're not expected to make um but but scheduling that i know that's um something that like i don't know if it's the identity group one of the other groups in hyperledger does this maybe it's aries and they seem to have success on it hart montgomery could give all the details on it and say who it was and what hours they picked Sounds good. Um, maybe what, what we want to start doing, like maybe postpone it like a couple of hours, one hour. I don't know, like how one we hour. To think about this. Yeah, one hour. Otherwise, either way would be good. Um, two hours before, one hour after would be great. Um, but I don't want to have people on the West Coast set an alarm clock and wake up at the crack of dawn unless they have to. <laughs> and I don't think we have to, but. I don't think one hour is going to uh, affect. <laughs> Yeah. me particularly much i think i'm the only like far west the coast us um and i've, I've been making trying to you know, make an effort to get to the uh australian time zone the asia pacific call um i'm kind of I, i'm i'm less inclined to want to go to an eight hour rolling just because i think that if it was an unpredictable time we would actually get less attendance but it's a it's a weekly held opinion uh I'm fine with it. I think the easiest would be just to ha have an hour offset. I think that's fine. That will solve most of the problem. Now that we're in daylight savings time too. Does it make it better or worse for Europe? Well, they're going to ship the daylight weeks. savings in another couple <laughs> hours. Yeah. That's fine. One hour will not change much. Okay. So I take this action item to, to move the meeting one hour uh, later, also for the next one. And we have also the day, uh, the, the hour change, right? time zones in two weeks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. Anything else to, to add or other points, other businesses, related updates or announcements? Cool. Looks like we're done. So thank you everybody and uh, see you next time. I got, I got one thing I'd like to throw out yeah. there real quick, um, just as a point of information. Um, I'm 
been looking into a lot of the discussions that we've been having around inversion of control and trying to decouple some things. And I'm starting to do an experiment where we use uh, Dagger to provide metric systems in BASU the same way that we do in the EVM tool. Um, so I just kind of wanted to throw that out there and let people know that that was a thing that I've started working on and, you know, soliciting any opinions. Um, expect to see a PR probably in the next week plus or so. Do we have a specific to talk about that or it's on uh, other channel in this call? Uh, I'm sorry, you're kind of faint there, Karim. Could you say that again? Uh, do we have a specific channel in Discord to talk about uh, your work? Or I was just going to do it in contributors. It's it's no different than any other type of software design question. Okay. That's all. Hey, Justin. I added in the note also on the agenda. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. See you yep. next time. Bye. 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 B